another episode of Heart of the Dragon. I'm so excited to be outside today because I ended up getting influenza this week and was feeling pretty crummy, but um, I'm starting to be on the mend, so I'm just glad to be outside because the fall is coming. It's supposed to be rainy next week, so having a couple days outside just enjoying the the uh, warm weather while it lasts is a blessing because once winter hits, I'll be cooped up inside, and that's kind of part of with my condition the way it goes. So I just want to talk a little bit today about gardening. Um, the past a month or so I've been taking a few video clips here and there of some of my favorite plants and I've uh, did some videos of some canning and some different things uh, just to share a little bit about things that are near and dear to my heart. Um, something to know about me is um, if you get on any of my social media sites is I love to um, be out in nature. I love to take pictures of um, flowers and plants and things in nature and then share them. And I also like to, um, I like to cook. I cook very healthy and uh, with a limited diet and I'm a little unconventional in some of my cooking. I like to do fun, healthy, unique things. And I like to take pictures of the food I eat and some of my pursuits of just being healthy and trying to take care of my body. And so I just want to do a, some, uh, a video about some of the things of why I enjoy gardening and what that means to me. So. Um, if you're looking for a video about, let's say, how to's with gardening or um, how to do things the right way, the conventional way, you are the wrong place because I am the crazy gardening lady. I, it, for me, it's not about doing it um, the way we're supposed to and following directions because I'm a little bit of a rebel. I'm a little bit of, I don't like to follow rules, <laughs> but I do like to just find joy in things. And one thing that gives me a lot of joy is being outside. I think part of the reason why I enjoy that so much is um, with having uh, chronic illness, being cooped up so much um, for years, um, especially during the winter, not being able to get out. I just, that there's just a freedom of being outside with the sun shining. There's a connection with the earth. There's a connection with God. It's just like such a glorious blessing thing to me. Um, so my time in the garden is not about following uh, gardening rules, having a nice, neat garden. It's not about um, um, having a beautiful yard because of uh, one, I have health issues that I have to modify how I garden and how I take care of our, our maintain our yard based on how I'm feeling. A lot of times I just, I'm weak or, have mobility issues, so I just do what I can, but I it, I just love it, and I love being out there, and so I come up with my own way. So if you wanna learn about finding joy, being connected with the earth, um, having a spiritual relationship with the Lord, being outside, then you're at the right place, because that's what my life is about. Um, I was talking to Stacy from Arizona on Facebook this week, and Stacy has, uh, I believe, chronic Lyme, and she is, is a right now wheelchair bound, and. She was just saying um, how much she misses that connection in the garden and she misses just feeling her, her feet connected with the earth and misses that, just that whole experience of being outside and, and producing your own garden and just that whole thing. And I just can so relate to how she feels. And I feel for you, Stacy. I really, my heart goes out to you because I know how hard that is when you're just not physically capable of getting outside. And she also mentioned to me that in Arizona this time of year, you maybe don't want to be outside because yeah, it's really hot. So we live in Wisconsin and Arizona summers are kind of like Wisconsin winters. They're yet yeah, people um, stay inside during the day and they come out at night in Arizona when it finally cools down and you don't feel like you're going to burn your feet off getting outside. This year, I was able to uh, pick out my own um, plants for the garden, which was pretty fun because in the previous years, my um, husband or my kids had to, and I kind of had to just I give them a list or give them an idea, but I kind of had to just uh, let them figure it out and, and accept whatever they find. And I was okay with that. So uh, this year I decided since I was able to get out and do it, and I, my daughter Annika took me um, to the to Fleet Farm, which is a, a uh, one of my favorite places to shop for uh, gardening. It's kind of like a farm and home type place. She took me there, and I was even a, I was able to pick out all my flowers and plants and seeds, and that was a lot of fun. We brought our uh, my nine year old son too, and he enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun just picking things out. 
this year I decided to do a funky fun gardening theme where I took on the challenge of <clears throat> seeing how many unusual plants I could find. So I found some uh, purple green beans, um, some unusual pumpkin and squash plants, and just a few fun things. Um, another thing I enjoy is lemon cucumbers, or like little lemon-shaped cucumbers. So those are some of the fun things that I planted in my garden this year. And um, I'll show you some videos of some of my favorites and some of the things I like to do with it. So some of my favorite parts about gardening is one, it's just the experience of being outside, feeling the bare earth and ground on my feet. There's always a risk for tick exposure. So if you are, if you're outside and you're concerned about that, always make sure you have a safe or a non-toxic tick spray that you can use. I use vinegar water. You can also make uh, sprays out of different essential oils. And so when I go outside, just that whole experience of being out and being in the sun, um, getting vitamin D, uh, being connected with the earth. And also, it, for me, it's a spiritual experience. So when I'm out in the garden, I spend a lot of time um, just working through things going on in my life that's bothering me. Or um, a lot of us may have insecurities. So I have, you know, insecurities maybe about what people think of me or relationships and if I'm having a particular issue with a relationship or something, then I can just get out there and while I'm working, just think it through and I pray about it and talk to God and kind of like that song in the garden where you feel connected to God. That's how I feel. That's my spiritual experience in the garden here. This is my sanctuary. This is my place of hope. This is my place of just feeling um, happy and joyful, um, sometimes sad or wrestling through, but it's where I can just be myself and enjoy being out here. So that's more important to me than having the nicest garden in the world or having the best produce. And I, um, I have good and bad years with my gardening. Um, I don't typically do melons because I've never figured out how to grow watermelon and cantaloupe and make them work. One year we did have some huge, beautiful watermelons and I, they were, um, orange watermelons which is kind of fun but um so for the most part i don't do that but i like to do some different kinds of squashes i always have quite a few cucumbers and um, i'll do usually some tomatoes um so just a few different things that i i like to do and things that are easy simple to grow um i i've tried in the past different ways to uh, keep the weeds down and i found just good old-fashioned hard work is the best way like I've tried straw or weed fabric and all those things and now I just get out there do it and because my body doesn't always cooperate very well I, I found sitting actually in the garden and just taking a little trowel and just a step by step pulling up those weeds is kind of what has worked best for me over the years so that's what I typically do and this year um, as you've seen in our videos we were out a lot more and we were busier so this year was when it come to weeding was not my best year but I had a pretty actually pretty good year with produce so I'm happy about that. These are my cone flowers they just kind of come up wild every year and um, since I, I cut down a lot of our um, raspberry bushes they really kind of went nuts this year so it's been fun to watch because uh, this time of year the monarchs just absolutely love my cone, cone flowers and they uh, I got a lot of good uh, uh, footage of that for my uh, some of my photographs that I like to take. These are my sunflowers. I just absolutely love sunflowers and I grow them every year. This year I had some pretty um, red ones and I have some yellow ones too. I also grow marigolds in my garden. These are white ones. My favorite marigolds are these red ones. I really like those a lot. They're kind of fun. We always have huge rhubarb bushes. They just get huge because they go by where our composting is. And so um, got a lot of good rhubarb this year. I started eating it this year. It's probably kind of inflammatory for me, so I need to cut back. But I think I'm going to start, uh, my practitioner mentioned if you uh, pre um, pressure cook your food, then it's um, more digestible. So I may look at doing that uh, with my rhubarb. No garden is complete without a delicious uh, zucchini plant. So I have, these are some green zucchinis, which are delicious for zucchini fries or zucchini chips. I like to bake in the oven for a treat. I have some tomatoes going on here. 
I like to do cherry tomatoes and Roma tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes are, are fl inflammatory for me, but I'm going to make some salsa and just have it as a rare treat. I also have some peppers. Love my peppers. Um, again, I'm not really supposed to eat them, so it's just a rare treat. Once in a while, I had to be real careful. This year, so I can make salsa, I uh, did some jalapenos, so can't wait to try those. Swiss chard is one of my favorite garden tr treats for um, cooking and juicing. And so I got lots of chard this year. I like the bright red ones, especially. I love the color and things. So I also have romaine lettuce. These are getting a little too big, but um, a little too tall. I got a too, too much stuff in here. Um, everything's kind of going crazy. I haven't really been out here much to keep up with my garden, but I, I like romaine lettuce too. This is a fun treat that I have never grown before. These are purple beans. They're like green beans that are purple. I just thought it'd be kind of cool and fun to grow those this year. So I did um, plant some of those and they've been coming up nicely. One of my favorite garden treats is beets. So I did some different kinds of beets this year. So I'm looking forward to trying them. This is one of my beet plants. Looks pretty nice. I love cucumbers. I grow them a lot every year. Again, my practitioner talked to me about um, cutting back on the cucumbers. So I'm going to have to pressure cook them. So I'm probably going to have to pickle them. Um, these are lemon cucumbers, which are really delicious and I absolutely love them. They, they're kind of yellow and lemony and they got a great flavor. All right, this is an acorn squash. And um, this is on one of the I probably shouldn't eat squash lists, but it's also on one of the yummiest, tastiest squash lists. So spaghetti squash is a staple in my cooking. And um, I put spaghetti squash in my soup and stuff. So um, I, because I compost, I usually get a lot of spaghetti squash that just comes up from my compost. So I'm looking forward to enjoying some of that. So this is a swan gourd that I uh, found in the garden. It's huge and it's pretty awesome vine. I'm really excited about that. I don't know how many I'll have because um, I got quite a bit of stuff growing over here and haven't really weeded it out. But anyway, I just wanted to show that because I thought that was pretty awesome. I'm excited about some of the cool funky things I'm growing in the garden this year. Here's one of my blue pumpkins. That was kind of a fun thing that I grew this year and it looks pretty cool. So I'm excited about uh, having something funky for decorating this fall. I always grow a ton of peppermint in my garden. I like to uh, juice peppermint and use it. I use a lot of my cooking. I even put it in my soup. Um, I like to make it in homemade bread, um, even cook it with meat and stuff like that. Um, this is a combination of regular peppermint and I got some mojito peppermint. I also grow spearmint. I have some spearmint and um, some chocolate mint, which is kind of fun. Uh, this is my thyme, which is really delicious. Oregano and sage. I like to have rosemary for cooking. Over here, I have some pineapple sage, which I've been using that for cooking and I've actually been using that for juicing too, which is pretty, pretty tasty. And I always keep some parsley on hand. Uh, my parsley is starting to kind of seed off but um, parsley is good for cooking juicing garnishing and then also when you make um, homemade bone broth you should use fresh parsley to it pulls out the nutrients I'm growing some dill my dill all died dill doesn't stay very long so I'm growing some more here that's just coming up by seed and we'll see I've been um, buying it from the health food store because I love my dill Cucumbers are always a favorite part of my garden. These are a bunch of cucumbers I picked yesterday that I got after our, our vacation. So there was a, quite a few big ones. Um, English cucumbers are the best for me because they are typically uh, seedless or have less seeds. And then when I use them, I should either, I usually peel them and freeze them or else um, if I can them, put them under high pressure, like pressure cooking, then I can leave the peels on. The other thing I like about the garden is just there's something very rewarding. It's uh, seeing something that you plant in the ground and seeing it grow and thrive and come forth and just watching all that. It's just a really fun, rewarding thing for me. And um, as you 
Some of you may know I am on an extremely restrictive diet and I'm actually always changing up my diet, trying to make it work for my um, impaired digestive system. And because of that, I am pretty limited in what I can eat. And a lot of things I grow in the garden even are considered inflammatory for me. So I have to be real careful. But I like to, I, for me, I love cooking. I love baking. And I um, have a limited time doing it, but when I do it, I love the challenge of coming up with whole natural ways to cook and prepare foods. And so for me, having as much things that I can grow in the garden as possible, um, I grow, I have my own potted herbs I do, and using my own garden produce to make soups and salads and even baking, it's kind of fun and it's kind of cool and I just love it. So I'm hoping that I can show you some of my little tricks that I've learned over the years um, and come up with some good ideas and solutions for people who might be in my situation where they might have gut or healing issues or their uh, food is inflammatory for them and just come up with ideas and suggestions so that you can just thrive and enjoy life and and feel good about something that you produce yourself. So those are some of the fun things that I like about the garden and uh, I'm going to I just enjoy talking about it and sharing some of those things on some of my social media sites. Thank you very much for joining us today. If you liked what you saw today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and then please be sure to hit the subscribe button below and then be sure to uh, hit the notification bell so that you can receive notifications on all of our future videos. We are on social media and you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the username Joyful Mama. Otherwise, we will also link that in the description below. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you later. Bye, Bye guys!